I'm a digital immigrant. There, I said it. Now, listen to this episode and find out why it matters. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg. I'm a speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, and I help businesses like yours sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Alan Berg. Welcome back to another edition of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. And on this episode, I want to talk about digital immigrants versus digital natives. Now, the definition of that is a little bit gray, but a digital immigrant like myself is someone that is doing business with technologies today that didn't exist when I started doing business. So when I started in the wedding and event industry, there are technologies that are around now that didn't exist back then. For instance, if you're watching this on YouTube, I recorded this on my computer with a webcam, a high definition 4K webcam that didn't exist back when I started in the industry. I had a mobile phone, but it was in my car, permanently in my car. So it wasn't portable the same way. Um, I didn't have an Apple Watch. I didn't have an iPhone. I didn't have an iPad, right? All these technologies. That doesn't mean that I don't like technology. Digital immigrant does not mean you don't like technology. It just means those technologies weren't around. Digital natives is who we're dealing with, with Generation Y, the millennials, Generation Z, the ones coming after that. And then I think they're the alphas, if I'm not mistaken, are the ones coming after those. Um, And what that means is people like my sons, I have two sons, they're both millennials. They've never known a world without a personal computer. They've never known a world without um, mobile phones, right? They've always existed. They've just never known, never known a world without those things. Now, there weren't Apple Watches when they were kids. There weren't iPads when they were kids. But technology, we've always had an office in our home. As for as, all of their lives, we've had an office in our home. We've had technology in our home. We were that house years and years ago. We were the house that had a fax machine when it was a separate piece. We were the house that always had a printer. We had a copy machine when that was a separate. Now I have this all, all in one unit. I have two printers here. One's an all in one unit. So copy, faxing, and printing. But we were that house. And my sons have never known a world without that because they're digital natives. So what's important is if you are either a digital immigrant or maybe you're a quasi digital immigrant because you're in between there where some of the technology was there, some of it wasn't there, just understanding that the perspective of someone who is a digital native in how to communicate is going to be different than it is for you who as a digital immigrant, you're used to things like, hey, if I just get you on the phone, we can have a conversation right now in real time, let's just do this but you're adding friction to the process of someone who's a digital native where having a conversation through their fingertips is just normal. I remember one time driving and my two sons are in the back seat and they were literally texting each other. They're sitting next to one another and they're texting each other. <laughs> and I, I said, just talk to each other, just talk. And they said, we are right. They were, they were having a conversation. Conversation doesn't mean what a digital immigrant thinks, which is having a conversation is talking to someone and in real time where we're saying words and we can hear each other, but that's not what a conversation is. A conversation is two people that are having a back and forth about something. And the technology these days says we can be doing that through the telephone, through Zoom, through texting, through messaging, through WhatsApp, through all these different platforms, email and so forth. And that's a conversation. So how do we make that conversation feel natural when maybe you're a digital immigrant doing business with a digital native, or maybe you are a digital native, but you realize that, hey, it might be easier if we could just get them on the phone or get them in for a meeting or a tour, that would be easier for you. And when it's easier for you, not necessarily easier for the customer, that's back to when we're adding friction to the process again. So I'm a digital native that came along happily with all the technology. I love technology. I'm surrounded by technology. I've always been a little bit of a tech geek there. But for me, they're tools. They're not toys. Um, If there are any games on my iPhone, 
they came with the phone because I didn't add them on there. I, I don't play games on the phone. If I want to play a, a game or something like that, I'm going to go into Duolingo and do some lessons because they gamified it, or I'm going to pull out some crossword puzzles and do them. And even those I like to do in pen, it's just different. I look at screens all day. I don't want to look at a screen when I'm doing a crossword puzzle. Maybe that's because I'm a digital immigrant. Maybe not. You know, my older son, who's a digital native, he likes doing crossword puzzles, you know, by hand as well. It's just a different kind of an experience. Um, I write books that are ebooks, audiobooks, and paperback books. Um, I love paperback books, but I find that they pile up and I, I just don't get to read them. So I do audiobooks. I'm a digital immigrant, but an audiobook, which existed back then. Uh, I remember uh, my uncle, who's also an author, I remember listening to his book on cassette tape because <laughs> that was the audio book. It was this binder that had a whole bunch of cassette tapes in there to get through the, the whole book. So there was audio books, but I couldn't just go and download it. I had to go to the store and I had to buy them, right? That's again, digital immigrant versus digital native. Do I use audio books now? Absolutely. I consume so many more books because I'm doing them on audio. So digital immigrant versus digital native. When you're dealing with someone who is a, a different uh, demographic than you, different age than you, understanding people are coming in with different perspectives, forcing them to do business the way you want or communicate the way you want could be a reason why some of them are ghosting you or going elsewhere. Because we do business with people that, of course, we know, like, and trust. If you've read the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, B-U-R-G, no relation, right? He talks about we do business with people we know, like, and trust, but we also do business with people who make it easy to do business with us. Uh, one of my clients one time was having a meeting. A, they were a hotel-based property, and they were having a meeting with a potential client the next day. I was up there for sales training, and I said, don't assume that they're coming to you to change hotels that they're using because of the number of rooms or the amount of event space or whatever. Don't assume anything, ask. And I said, ask them why they're looking for a new provider. And they were shocked. They told me the day after they had the meeting, they were shocked that the customer said the reason they were looking to change was because of the lack of responsiveness of the other property. It wasn't the amount of rooms. It wasn't the event space. It wasn't the food or anything like that. The fact that the company wasn't being responsive to them is what was making them look for someone else. There's an expectation that if you're going to do business with someone, they're going to be responsive. And yet I hear time and time and time again, where companies are making it hard to do business with someone instead of easy. Um, I had a, meet, a call yesterday with one of my venue clients, and they said that there's a competitor that if you come for a tour, they give you 20 minutes and that's it. You can't come back. You get one tour and that's it. No, no others. It's like 20 minutes and then you're done and that's it. And they let the people basically walk around by themselves. Do you want a book? To me, that's not selling. That's order taking and not good order taking besides that. Uh, but there's friction. You go to another venue where somebody spends time with someone and shows interest in them. They, If, if things are pretty equal, they're going to go with the company that they felt better doing business with. So digital immigrants, digital natives, what do your customers expect? What are the companies they do business with? What is it about those companies that makes them come back again and again? Is it a transparency in pricing and, and the way they're, they're talking about prices? Is it in the payment terms? Is it in the just the lack of friction because they're just making it easy to do business with them at every stage of the game? Um, I, I still have companies that will send me paper document PDFs that I'm supposed to print out to fill out by hand and then scan and then send back to them these documents. That's too much friction. And then you have another company. It's like, oh, here you go. Just fill this out online. Or um, I'll get in a bill and I'll go to pay that bill online and there's no way to pay the bill online. There's friction. I, I had this, I actually had one account. It was a health savings account. I had to get checks because the only way to pay this particular doctor's bill was by writing them a check, which was just ludicrous. So friction, right? It'll make you choose somebody else when the friction is there. But what is that friction and that perception could be different if you're a digital immigrant versus digital native. So again, digital immigrant doesn't mean I don't like technology. Oh, forget all this technology. It just means it wasn't there. And we have to learn to adapt just like we have to learn to adapt to our customers in the way they want to do business. Digital natives, and now there's a, a new generation of digital natives with another set of technologies that 
the world has always had as far as they're concerned that the millennials aren't used to like my sons again you know they don't know about portable phones you know they were there but not originally when they were kids right the ipads the apple watches and stuff they weren't there so this technology came along with them they're their own form of digital immigrant not as much as me but they're their own form of digital immigrant so just food for thought just something i jotted down and thought maybe we should talk about thanks for listening Thanks for listening to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel and post a review on your chosen platform, Apple Podcasts or whichever one. If you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of my episodes, email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com or visit my website, allenberg.com, A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com. If you have any suggestions for future topics or guests that you'd like to see, please again email me or visit my website. Thanks for listening.